Well, hey there, everybody. How's it going? It is Embrace the Matrix, and this is a voiceover. So since I didn't get really any feedback from the last video I did with a voiceover, I thought, what the hell, I'll do this one with a voiceover as well, because actually this painting took me weeks to do over time, and even when I edited it down and sped it up, it was still 20 minutes. So I thought, what the hell, I'll tell you a little bit about my Lifeline series and how it came to be. and. So sit back, grab yourself a beverage, a cup of coffee, cup of coffee, water, whatever you drink, and uh, you know we'll, you can listen to me for the next 20 minutes. I myself am drinking some organic green tea. I don't drink coffee; I only drink tea, preferably decaffeinated. So, anyways, this is a 24 by 24 inch canvas. Um, you know, I, unlike some of my other paintings, I knew initially this was going to be another Lifelines um, Envision. Um, the Lifelines series, which I have quite a few, this is actually, I believe, number 11. Um, this just came out of me experimenting, really. Um, I have a couple different series, and uh, this one gets a lot of, a lot of positive feedback and a lot of. You know, a lot of likes, if you will, a lot of interest, but <clears throat> it came down to me just, um, you know, experimenting, and uh, I wanted to make straight lines, and I didn't really want to use a ruler, um, so I thought, well, maybe string. I haven't seen anybody do it. You know, I know there's string art. If you search string art, you get people that wrap string around nails and stuff, but I've never seen anybody do it like I do it. Um, I'm, I'm sure somebody out there does, but I've just never seen anybody do it like I do. Um, so anyways, that's my, uh, my bucket, my five gallon bucket. Um, I use that obviously to make perfect circles because I can't make a perfect circle otherwise. So obviously I'm using some reds and some blacks and uh, different shades of reds and you know, I try to do my paintings more in layers now. So, you know, obviously I did the background, I let it dry, and then I came back and I'm doing the circle. And then I'm, you know, I'm just feathering it out a little bit, um, trying not to, you know, get any paint inside it because I'm trying to keep the circle perfect. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I do subscribe to the whole Bob Ross theory of happy accidents and stuff, but you know. If you're going for a certain thing, you don't want you know the paint to screw it up. Um, so I let that dry, and then um, came in with a different shade. And of course, you see me cleaning up a little little over paint, um, coming in with a little different shade, and you know just going feathering it out a little more, doing a little like I don't know when I when I do it um, these kind of circles with this flare, it just reminds me of sort of like a buzzsaw or like sun like sun flares or something I don't know I just uh, I kinda like the uh, the flow you get when you go around uh, you know in a circle and flare it out like that and of course I'm using a gigantic brush these artists loft I don't even know what they're called I just call them a big ass brush they're like 13 bucks at Michaels and then if you get a coupon you know they're like six dollars but they're gigantic you know like round end brush which I think is just awesome for uh, laying paint down there it's actually my go-to brush and I have some really nice Liquitex you know freestyle brushes that I like as well but as far as doing stuff like this I go right for those artist loft um, gigantic brushes I got like four or five of them and they last I mean I clean them out and they survive uh, they don't they don't shed bristles they don't fall apart so I know you know artist loft is considered you know student grade but I don't know they make a pretty good brush at least this one is uh, in my opinion so we obviously we're throwing some black in there 
you know, at this point too, I'm kind of just winging it. Um, I, I know the direction I'm going in. I, I'm pretty much laying the background uh, before I get to the actual, you know, the line art stuff. And, you know, at this point, I'm just, I'm layering, you know, like you do. I'm just trying to get a real cool vibe with the background and the circle with the circle flares. And you know, I actually have it propped up, so, because sometimes the light I have overhead, you know, it's hard, it, it glares out and it messes with um, what I'm looking at, so I tend to prop them up sometimes. And this is a very quick clip here. Um, you see I got a cardboard cut out in the middle because I, the circle, the inside circle got kind of messed up. And here we are. Again, I'm fixing it again. Um, this time I cut another cardboard circle out of uh, obviously a little tykes box and uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix it this is how we fix an abstract art painting when it doesn't quite go the way you want it to um, you know I, I lost some some circularness with uh, that so you know just cut yourself out another circle smaller go around it flare it and obviously I'm going in the opposite direction because I can and you know different color this is more of a dark maroon red it might even be a blend of red and black um, but yeah I mean this is um, the the lifeline series is kind of taking on a life of its own I mean there's so much I can do with it and I'm trying to you know not make the stuff too crazy but you know also really really interesting to the eye um, so obviously you know this is this is the process I mean I only use hemp string or hemp cord and you know I uh, thin out my paints I, I do um, you'll see the bottle in the top right that's got golden airbrush medium in it uh, I use that to thin out my paints I don't I do not use water um, so yeah you know a little bit of black a little bit of that just to thin it out because you know this heavy body paints and these thicker paints you know if you don't thin them out a little it's just gonna glop on so you know get your string dip it in you know I strip I strip it a little and this I have two techniques where I use um, the line art and this is the my first technique I did which is pretty much laying the string down and pulling it off and as you can see it it, it, it leaves spaces in between the lines um, <clears throat> which is cool you know it doesn't give you a perfect line but it gives you the line with obviously no real perfection um, and that's the technique I use throughout this one the other the other what technique I use is where I put the string down and then I drag the string forward and back so it covers paint the you know the entire length of the string so you do get a perfect line um, but at this point I want I really want to go for a real rugged kind of sporadic not perfect lines and this you know this part of it although it's sped up it's it's it takes some time uh, because you know I, I make sure that you know there's not too much paint on the string but there's enough you know you can usually get about four or five you know lines out of uh, one thing in my opinion I mean I'm I'm going for a certain look here and but yeah, it's a matter of just, you know, getting your string wet. And I've tried, the other thing too, is I've tried different kinds. I've tried so many different kinds of string. Um, nylon, paracord, cotton, uh, bl you know, cotton blends, polyester, weird, goofy blends. Nothing, and I do mean nothing, works or holds paint like hemp does. Hemp cord holds the paint the best. I, I don't know. I've tried all kinds of stuff and nothing works like hemp does so obviously I'm letting it dry in between these different colored lines did a black one now we're doing we did a yellow now I'm gonna do white because I'm trying to you know obviously create a little dimension with looking at the painting um, obviously you can see it's looking sort of like a hurricane kinda but I'm uh, getting more and more into textures 
and height off the canvas or I don't know how, what you want to call it but I'm definitely starting to really dig getting that paint to lift off the canvas now you don't see a lot of that and you know in this particular painting but I'm d you'll see it towards the end but I'm definitely leaning towards you know really dynamic textures and stuff at least I'm trying to I mean I'm still uh, a uh, developing artist and still finding my way I guess you could say I mean I certainly think I've created some of my own unique um, styles and techniques and you know I'm broadening on those but you know I'm also you know still experimenting and still trying new things but I'm certainly leaning going with stuff that's working like this series people seem to like uh, my fusion series people really like um, and my newest uh, newer series which is the insanus series the one with a lot of little dots people really dig in on those too um, but see, the thing is, when I paint, I, I purely paint for myself. I'm not painting for anybody else but myself. I'm just doing what I like to do. For me, this is extremely therapeutic and relaxing. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do it correctly. I don't want to just, you know, uh, you know, slip. And if I drop the uh, string on the canvas, believe me, I will get very mad. And I will try to wipe it off and fix it. Um because I am going for a certain look here but you know nonetheless I, I do believe in the happy accidents uh, you know, philosophy but you know I also feel like boom okay now that's perfect now don't mess with it no more uh, you know and all I'm doing here is I'm just pushing the paint down a little in the middle I'm gonna create circles in the middle but uh, I just want I don't want the paint rising up too much so I can't get a nice level surface and you know obviously you know again I can't make I can't draw a perfect circle so I love using stencils and things like this stuff like this tends to go pretty quickly um, I tend to like when I'm doing certain things like this I tend to like to use golden uh, paints because they're they're like especially the black it's, it's thicker it, it covers everything you won't see it through and of course, I'm just trying to find the center of the painting by eyeballing it. I, I wasn't using any measurements or anything. I'm just purely eyeballing it and hoping that it's in the center. And it usually is. I think this is a roll of tape I'm using to get a circle. Um, and poof, there you go, circle. Um, and of course, I'm trying to smooth out the edges a little because sometimes when you're even using... Um, you know stencils and stuff paint smears out to the side and whatnot so I'm just trying to get it as perfect as possible because that's how I am believe me I I, I although you know I uh, this is therapeutic and free-flowing I mean I am going for a certain look I'm going for a certain style um, a certain visual cue whatever you want to call it and you know I moved over to my easel I really don't know why but sometimes it's you know easier to paint like this and of course I had bad camera sense I should have moved the camera to the other side so you'll see the back of my arm a little bit but uh, this this part it goes pretty quickly but you know I was just looking I just wanted to flare out that I didn't want a solid black line I wanted to like kinda like flare out a little uh, into the uh, into the lines to make it look like sort of like the lines were coming out from behind the black uh, obviously you know multi-directional um, whatever I don't even know what I'm saying the fact that you're listening uh, I appreciate that um, but yeah so it's uh, there we go see now I got some sense so I did the same thing with the red, but I got a little better camera sense. Um, I try to, you know. I think making these videos are cool, too, because I don't know about you, but I see a lot of paintings that I like, and for me, I always wonder, how did they do that? And I don't know if people don't show it because they're trying to keep their, their, their tricks or tips or whatever, I don't know, to themselves. But I personally don't think I'm doing anything that, uh, 
bizarre or crazy that's, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I wish more people did videos like this, especially painters and stuff, because, you know, it's, it's really cool, I think, to see the creative process. Um, especially if you see something really neat and you're like, whether you're an artist or not, maybe you're just a fan or you're just somebody that appreciates art and you're like, wow, how do you get those lines to look like that? You know, you might think I did it with a brush or something, but until you actually see it, you know, and go, oh, wow, he's doing it with string. Okay, I see now and, and all that and where, you know, where can you take it? So obviously, you know, we're throwing another quick little circle in here um, because I had planned on putting more lines in over the current um, the current circles I put in there and I think I said in my last video I'm a big fan of circles and lines um, I don't know I think they just they seem to go well together um, so we let that dry as always like I said I, I let it dry in between layers I'm generally working on two to three paintings at a time so I, I bounce back and forth this one took me a few weeks to do um, I just got some new brushes. This is one of my new brushes. It was on um, discount, not discount, but it was on sale at Michael's, and they were like level two or three brushes or something. But I don't know, they're really cool. They're small, but they have a, a, a rounded edge. I really don't know what you'd call it, but uh, I just uh, I like what I like. You know, I, I you know I hear people you know talking about equipment and you know and materials and stuff and this is good and that's good like I said I really like artist loft the big artist loft brushes and they're you know that's I classified as student grade some people would be like oh that's you need to use better quality no I've seen some pretty pretty famous artists using really cheap brushes and cheap paints I guess it's just, you know, how you do it and what you do. So here we go. We're throwing, um, this is going to be the last um, lines, but I think it gives it some real cool dimension. Like, you have the lines coming out from behind the black and the red, and now you have these lines coming over top, coming out of it. And, of course, if, if you've, if you've uh, you know, I've done a few um interviews and features and stuff and if you understand my philosophy behind the lifelines um, the look and stuff the way I look at it is these lines represent people um, you'll notice too at the end uh, you know in, in all my lifelines paintings there's always one line that's different one line that is uh, a different color than the rest <clears throat> stands out than the rest um, and the way I look at it is, you know, all these lines are people coming out of a center, you know, uh, maybe like a center sun or a center, you know, I don't know how to say it. Like, um, how do you say it? I don't, I don't know, like a center core maybe. And then that one different colored line, that's you, that's me, that's whomever, you know, that's, that's you. Um, uh, as an individual showing your uniqueness you know uh, that's just I don't know maybe maybe it's not making any sense to you but it makes sense to me um, basically you know we're all people and we're trying to you know be unique or be special and that's how you do it you just you know you have to do your thing leave your mark um, find out what it is you're good at or what you like to do and do it as much as you can and get as good as it as you can and if you have the ability let people know and let people see it um yeah so but that's it you know as all these lines represent people and then the one line represents you or me the person looking at the painting what is that what does that one line mean to you that is you it's you as an individual shining out so here we go we're throwing on yet another circle in a circle, within a circle, around a circle, um, flaring it out a little bit. <clears throat> Again, just trying to create a little more dimension and mystique to this one. I really, actually, really like uh, this Lifelines painting, and uh, I just like the the overall look and vibe that it came out. Now, here's where it gets fun. Here's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Um, 
this is that line. This is that individual, obscure, uh, unique line. It's going to be a red line. So it goes with the painting, but it's obviously going to stand out. And, you know, same like always, you know, mix it with a little, um, I mix it with a little less uh, airbrush medium because I want it to be a little thicker and stand out a little more. And I might drop it a few times, as you'll see. Yeah, I'm dropping it to coat because I really want it to sort of stand out. And it's, believe me, it's hard to see it in the video. Um, but in, in obviously in real life, you can very definitely see it. Now, at this point, I was like, I got to make a center. And, of course, I just dropped a dollop of crimson on there from Galleria. Galleria Crimson. And, uh... I haven't seen anybody else really do that either. I'm sure somebody has at some point. But I really like that that height. You'll see in the stills the kind of height you get. It pretty much looks like a Hershey's Kiss, but it's paint. Um, so these are obviously, these are, you know, in process pictures I take, you know, close up, just showing you what's going on, how we got to where we got. Can you believe it's been almost over 20 minutes and we're almost through? You made it. You survived. I appreciate you listening. And if you really like these voiceovers, please let me know by commenting below. Um, and if you don't, please tell me as well. And I'll just, you know, crank up the music and let you sit back and, and watch the videos uh, unfold. As you can see, you can see the, the height and dimension you get with that. This is dried, um, completely dried. And I think you get some really cool height off of it. And... I've done a lot of different things, and obviously this is what it looks like. Final, I take all the photos for my pictures um, with a DSLR camera, so they come out pretty good. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.